Today I've got a graphics card that I need to repair. Um, what model is it? It's a uh, 1050 Ti, 4 gig of RAM on it. This is my old graphics card, I've upgraded it because I wanted to do some stuff with AI and I needed more RAM, SRAM. Um, and unfortunately when I pulled it out, I ripped off um, this little capacitor off the board somewhere. I'll need to figure out where that is. Um, yeah, I just pulled it too hard and off it popped. Now I haven't plugged it back in. Sometimes you can, you know, pop off a capacitor or something like that and it doesn't really affect the board. Um, well, at least immediately because the capacitor is used for smoothing or something like that. Uh, but I'm not going to risk it. I'm going to try and put it back on. And um, yeah, so I thought I'd make a video of it while I did that. One of the problems that I'm going to have is the capacitor itself. Let me see if I can switch over to the view. Get that in there. You can see that I've basically ripped off one of the legs. So uh, putting it back on might be a bit of a problem. Uh, I'm not really sure. I need to remove this plastic. Uh, shroud first so that I can get at the circuit board where I pull it off and I'll look at that to see what I can do about soldering it back on. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure and of course I don't know until I pull off this plastic piece whether or not I've ripped the trace. So let's give that a go. So to remove this plastic shroud, I think I need to just remove these screws down in here. I can't see any other way of doing it. So I'll give that a go. Yeah, it looks like that's good. just got to lift off. And I'm going to just disconnect the fan just so it's not going to be in the way. It's pretty tough to do that. Okay, I'll leave him there for the moment. Or else I will end up wrenching something off. It's actually interesting that um, that fan just sits in there like that. And the screws hold it in place on the plastic shroud and also hold it into a heat sink here. It's a little bit dusty. I might um, give that a clean. See what we can do. Look at that, crusty. a little bit of alcohol on it. Okay, I don't think that's too bad. So, where did this come off? 
I'm looking at the board. Ah, okay. It's over here, I think. Let me just get rid of those. So I think this is the spot here where it's been ripped off. I'll just go over to the microscope. Is that frozen up? Let me have another look. Okay. All right. So there's. You get a pointer. There's where it was ripped off. Okay, so here's where it's ripped off. Um, and here is the actual capacitor itself. You can see that one leg is gone. Um, the other one's intact, but these particular uh, surface mount capacitors they have a little plastic um, mount that they sit on this thing here um, which I guess keeps them from shorting out against the again this can from shorting out so it keeps it up away from the uh, PCB um, so I guess I could try and repair the lead on this it's going to be pretty dodgy if I do I'd rather get the capacitor, a replacement capacitor for this. It looks like all these other, all these other capacitors around it are the same value. Um, but let me have a look at this. So, what does it say on it? So it's eight hundred and twenty two point five volts. So I've had issues in the past misreading capacitors um, because uh, there seems to be different standards. So in one standard, that could be 82 um, UF. So 82 with the last, which is zero, indicating that um, there are no, um, it's not times by 10. Um, or it could actually physically be 820 UF. Um, so since I've removed it from the board, <laughs> uh, and there's enough of the lead there, I should be able to actually test it. Uh, just using a multimeter and get a basic reading, because I don't think it's been um, damaged in any way apart from having its lead, lead pulled off. Um, so what can I do? I'll get that into the shot. Get that out of the way. It's closing. Try this spin. the lighting now sorry about that okay so um this is the negative side with a stripe on it i believe so that's the one with the leg on it and i'll just put this on here Let's see if i can't get a reading Seven hundred and sixty-eight. Okay, so it's not eight twenty. Well, it's definitely not uh, eighty-two. Um, so I'm guessing that it's maybe eight hundred and twenty 
Microfarads. Um, with maybe a 20% tolerance. It makes sense. Anyway, it's definitely not 82. So I'm going to have to go online and see if I can't cure something that will that will match this because definitely I'm not going to have one and um, JCAR is the only local supplier and I'm pretty sure they won't have anything. I don't think they even do service mount components. So I'll see if I can get something and uh, next time I come back I should have something to install. Capacitors have arrived from Banggood or AliExpress, I can't remember. I think it was AliExpress. I'm just curious to see the difference in tolerance between the two new ones that I bought. So this is 854. And this is 821. Yeah, so. And uh, like I said, the original one it came off. Is uh, 768. So yeah, I'm not really sure why that one is so far out. Doesn't matter, this will suffice, I'm sure. I'm just preparing the pads now by uh, tinning them with some fresh solder. I'm using a needle nose tip here, sort of the biggest one that I can get that's going to fit between the um, capacitors here. I'll probably put a bit too much solder on here, you really want it to be flat. It would be ideal if I had some, some solder paste. Um, but I'm applying um, a whole bunch of flux for a couple of reasons, uh, to help the solder run properly. Um, but also just to help hold the capacitor in place while I get ready to solder it. So the leads of the capacitor are really underneath the plastic bit there. So when I apply the heat here to the outside, I'm not really soldering the outside of the pin. I'm trying to get the heat to go from the outside of the pin underneath the capacitor and solder itself to the board all along the, the lead that I can't get to and that's really the trick to doing this sort of um, soldering it's not going to be as pretty as if it was using you know it was a factory job but uh, it does work so I'm cleaning my tip at this point and I'll apply a bit more solder to the outside of the tip in a ball and then I'll push that up against the end of the lead um, until I can tell that it has melted into the solder and the solder underneath the can or underneath the capacitor has has all gone molten and that's where the uh, the flux really helps. Yeah, it didn't take so long on that side because I was able to push a bit harder and get the thicker end of the, the soldering tip against it. And that's it. I mean, it, it's not terribly hard, but you really have to use that technique. If you try and solder it like you would a normal component where you can get to the very ends of the um, component leads, it doesn't really work. You really have to be careful or mindful that you're soldering um, the leads that are underneath. So this is a little bit of benchmark testing. Works completely fine. It doesn't overheat. 
I think I had it going for around about an hour in the end and I think it only got to about 68 degrees so I'll consider that good anyway that's it so I hope you enjoyed it please subscribe like etc catch you next time cheers